Hey everyone, we'll get started in a minute here. Uh, only if you're gonna talk. Yeah. Who's that mine too? Let's see. Couple things here before we get going. Here's a Google Sheet. And I want everybody to enter their shoe size so they have some data to work with. Size uh, up. Everyone can go to that Google Sheet real quick and enter their shoe size. I would appreciate it. Let's see. Grab my erase my board. Welcome, welcome. Oh, view only? Hmm, how do I change that? Let's see. Good question, James. How do you change that? Not so good with the Google Sheets. Let me see. Well, it was a good idea. <laughs> Tools. Accessibility now. Hmm. I don't know. Document details, maybe? If you click on their name, you should be able to change your access. Oh, haha. -ha. Smart. And maybe I'm clicking on them, but it doesn't seem to do anything. Darn it. I wanted this to be easier. Ah. <laughs> Click share and their names and access should pop up. Oh, that is great. Yes, anyone can edit. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Hopefully that helped and now you can do it. Can you enter your shoe size at this Google Doc? I see, it looks like someone is doing something. You don't have to put your name. You can, but it's not necessary. Um, so welcome to class. I am, I've been watching um, Whitener's stuff. I see the class on Monday kind of didn't happen because there were some Zoom issues, but it looks like she uploaded a video. Um, Nindari also finally added me to his stuff. So I've been trying to kind of catch up and see what he's doing. <clears throat> but it feels to me, at least for now, that following along with Whitener is easier for me. But 
Oops. Oh, sorry. And I should um I should put myself I should pin my video here. Apologies. Um. So yeah, I've been following along with Whitener, but I can also try and look at what Nimdar is doing so that I can be kind of updated with it again. If everyone could go, please enter their shoe size so we can have some data to work with. We're gonna do some. Um, statistics with the data. Um, but first, I guess I should ask, are, is, what would you guys like to talk about today? I've got a couple ideas, but is there anything specifically you all would like to see? You can, you can unmute yourself and talk. You can say something in the chat. I'm gonna erase my board while you think about if you have anything you want to see. I have a question. Huh. Um, a lot of the a lot of the homework problems that we've been like having, at least for Namdari, um, are like interpret the mean, interpret the standard deviation. Is there a specific way that we have to interpret it? Because um, I remember like in high school when I took stats, the our like teacher was like, "Oh, you're supposed to use like specific words to interpret it." So I'm like, um. If there's a specific way to interpret, um, like standard deviation, the mean, the median, and the mean. So that's a really good question, um, and I would say more generally, a lot of statistics is inter is about interpreting what those measurements mean. Um, very general, and so I, I don't remember um, for Dindari. I think you guys are using this book or a book like this book. Um, I think I might have a slightly different edition than you guys have. It should be fine. Um, I'm I'm curious. Do you, do you have a specific problem in mind? Because I'm kind of wondering what exactly they're asking here. I think we're kind of. Let's see. And yes, I see people saying standard deviation. We can also talk about standard deviation. Is z-score already? All right. Who's talking about, is, is Nimdari talking about Z-score already? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so interpreting things. Um, and again, if you haven't already, if everybody, I really do want everybody so we can have some data to work with. If everybody could go enter their shoe size. Um, if it's, if it's uh, I'm going to not deal with half sizes, so I'm going to change that eight and a half to a nine. If everyone could go into their shoe size at this Google Sheet, I would appreciate it because we'll use that for some data. Um, so what was I going to say? So interpreting things. Interpreting mean, median, mode, for example. So I mean, Here's what I would say about these things in general. They are measures of the middle. Sometimes they're good measures, sometimes they are not very good measures. Um, the mean sometimes is a great measure of like what is actually the average, but sometimes it's really not depending on what kind of data we're dealing with. Um, but again, let's see. Sorry, I'm trying to look for a specific question here. One second. So I guess I'm, I guess I'm not exactly sure what your question is. Could do you, do you have an example question that he's asked? Um, I think it's more like a lot of the problems that we do after like let's say figuring out like solving like the mean or things like that um it asks like can you interpret the mean or like interpret the standard deviation so like is there a specific like sentence structure that we must follow when it comes to like interpreting um mean median and standard deviation okay so i think it depends on what kind of data you're dealing with for example so if we were to look at something like, mm, so let's say, okay, I'll pull the data set here. So it really kind of depends on 
if there if you're given sort of context for the data. So I'm looking at an example problem from page 2.8, or sorry, from page 85 in this book. And I'm just gonna, there's some numbers here that I'm going to put through. So here's a bunch of data. And these numbers are given without context. 121, 173, 157. You don't have to write these down because we're going to kind of, I'm going to put them in somewhere else. And there's a lot of data here. So if this data was given without context and someone said, you know, what's the mean? Well, we could calculate the mean. I don't know what it is at the moment, but we're gonna, we can calculate it in a minute here. But the mean of this data is a measure of, well, it's just a measure of the middle, but it doesn't really mean a whole lot. Not to, no pun intended. Um, and the standard deviation, again, is a measure of how far the measurements are from the middle. But again, there's no real context here. On the other hand, if I said that these numbers were, say, I don't know, what's a reasonable possibility? If I said these were the heights of people in centimeters, which is probably a little short, but whatever, just pretending like it makes sense, then there would be some context. So let's go to, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen for a minute. Maybe. Because like there's specific problems, but I, not everyone has access to the problem. So I don't know how to like. That's okay. So then can you, yeah. So I've been, I've been finding that this meta calculator is decent for what we're doing. They may not be the best. If I look at this data here, which I suppose is easier to read from my book, so if I just type this in, you could also do this in Excel as well. Um, so putting in this data, 121, 173, it takes a minute. You know, it's fun to watch me type things. Um, in fact, while I'm typing things, everyone should go to the attendance document which is, oh, I, can, I always forget that I lose the chat when I do this. Where did the chat go? I know I can find it if I'm not terrible. Mm, there it is. There we go. Chat, show me the chat. Here's the chat. Everyone should go to the attendance um, Google form and fill out their student ID number and what class it's for. Why? Oh man! Well, I enter the data, but I apparently all put in one thing. Sorry, you have to tab to the next thing. Uh, it's terrible. How's everyone doing? How's life treating you guys? Sorry, one six six. Almost there. Whoops. All right, so there are our twenty one pieces of data. Got them entered in here, and now I'm just going to calculate the basic statistics. And so here's what we see. We see a few things. We see what the maximum and the minimum values are mid-range sum, but if I go in here, here's the median of 165. So if I was thinking of this as people's heights in centimeters, I would say, okay, well, the weighted average height is 165 centimeters. I don't know if there's more to say about that as far as interpreting the data. I would say, okay, that's kind of a measure of the center. I could also say that, <laughs> glad to hear thriving, barely surviving. Um, the median is also a measure of the middle, right? The, so again, the difference between the median and the, and the mean is the mean is the weighted average where each value gets the same weight, whereas the median is just a measure of what's exactly in the middle. There's so many, so the median in this particular example 
there are 10 people that are below the median and there's 10 people that are above the median and there's one person here since there's 20 people that is exactly in the middle. Um, and then I'll also look just here, the standard deviation being 27, that's a measure of how much variability there is. So if someone asked me to interpret the standard deviation, I would say, okay, well, and I, so I feel like there's more to say about that actually. So depending on what they're ask, looking for, I would say one of the following things. So standard deviation is 27 centimeters, meaning that, well, so here's one thing you can say of standard deviation. If, oh, and let's, let's um, go back, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to the, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a second. So if you're making the assumption that your data is relatively normally distributed, or we have this kind of normal distribution shape, then there are some assumptions you get to make about how things are distributed. Specifically that, so if your mean is in the middle, we usually use this lowercase mu for the mean, that if you go, so this is mu plus sigma, and mu minus sigma, sigma being the standard deviation. If you go one standard deviation in either direction, then 68% of the population is typically within one standard deviation on the other side. So using that information here, I would say, okay, so my mean is, I forget what my mean was, it was 158 centimeters. That's an eight, by the way. <laughs> my standard deviation is about 27 centimeters. And so what I'm saying with this is that about 68% of the data is within 158 plus 27. So that's 185 and 158 minus 27, which is 141. So from 141 to 185, we would expect to there to be about 68% of the data. And then, if you're going two standard deviations in either direction, you get about 95% of the data. So in that case, that would be, oof, so 185 plus 27 is 212. So that would be 200, up to 212 and down as low as um, minus another standard deviation would give me uh, 114. So we'd expect about 95% of the data to be within two standard deviations, which is 114 to 212. And then three standard deviations is about 99.7% of the data. And that would be everything from, so 114 minus another standard deviation is gonna be 87 to 239, just adding 27, subtracting 27. Sorry if you guys can't see that super well. And that seems about right, I mean, there. Are, there's definitely no data above 239, but there is one data point that's below 87. So this seems pretty reasonable. So I would say that's one kind of way to interpret the standard deviation is saying, okay, well, you could have this much within this kind of range of values. But it's hard to give specific words exactly. Like I said, okay, what does the standard deviation of 27 centimeters mean? It means that you have some variability in your data met in your data set, right? And the larger the standard deviation is, the more variability there is across your data. And the smaller your standard deviation is, the less variability. Um, if we look at say, so here's a real kind of dumb example. So um, here are two real small data sets. Data set one, let's pretend we talked to five people and all their shoe sizes were size nine. Set two, we talked to five people and two of them had size sevens, one of them had a size nine and two of them had a size one. So here the average or the mean is definitely nine. Here the average or the mean 
which was definitely nine. Here, the standard deviation is zero. Here, the standard deviation is not zero. The standard deviation, there definitely is. So here it's zero because there's literally no variance or deviation from the mean. Here there is. And the way you calculate the standard deviation, so there's a couple of different things depending on what you're saying. If this is just a sample of your population, you're going to divide it by n minus 1. If it's the entire population, you're going to divide by n. So here, n, the number of observations, is 5. And it certainly seems like this wouldn't be the entire population. So I'm going to go with dividing by n minus 1. But it's kind of kind of have to make sure you know what's being asked. So if I was calculating the sample standard deviation, it would be the following. So the way we find the standard deviation is we calculate the sum of the squares of the differences, which looks like this. So the way we kind of write it is. I forgot the one over n minus one. So here's how we're calculating our standard deviation. It's one divided by n minus one times the sum of all of these values different from the mean. Here's what this actually looks like. It looks like one over four times seven minus nine squared plus seven minus nine squared. So the x sub i's are the actual data points, and the x sub bar is the mean. Plus 9 minus 9 squared, plus 11 minus 9 squared, plus 11 minus 9 squared. If we calculate this, we get 1 fourth times, let's see, that's 4, that's 4, that's 0, that's 4, that's 4. So I get 16. So here my standard deviation is 4, which um, sorry, oops, that's not quite it. Sorry, this is my variance. This is the variance. And then the standard deviation is the square root of the variance, which is the square root of 4, which is 2. Um, and it's kind of a coincidence that these happen to differ by 2 and the standard deviation is 2, but that's kind of the idea here is that the more variation there is in your data set, the larger the standard deviation will be. The less variation there is in your data set, the smaller the standard deviation will be. In this case, and if there's no variation where everything is the same value, you literally get a standard deviation of zero. Um, so I just want to make sure everybody, I think people just a couple bleh, words, a couple people just join. Let me make sure everybody has a chance to go to the Google Doc, sorry, the Google form to record their attendance. Um, let's see. So people asked other things. Let me go back and look here. Cool. So, oh, I also want to say one other thing. Um, tomorrow, the AATC will start having um, online drop in tutoring available. And there should be help available in statistics as well. So if you want help from a student tutor in statistics, you can go to here tomorrow or starting tomorrow and schedule an appointment with someone. So that's an available resource for you guys. And I also want to mention that I know I sent some of you an email about the quiz being not turned in and I kind of made an error. I accidentally thought the quiz was due yesterday, but accidentally wrote it as being due today. So if you got that email and you're a little confused, don't sweat it. You can still do the quiz, it's due today. Of course, everything is really kind of optional. I would like you all to do the quiz, but I totally understand if you have other stuff that's more pressing. So please do the quiz, but don't feel like you absolutely have to if you don't want to. Um, all right, so let's see. So we can definitely talk more about standard deviation. So yeah. <laughs> All right, so we can look at this data set. It's kind of gross. Sure. So I just want to point out for this data set I've got here, um, 
the number of pieces of data n is 21. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times 3 is 21. And we got, I will say, lucky. So looking at the meta calculator here, the mean was exactly 158. So if I were going to calculate the standard deviation, and so I should say, I don't really, I don't know how much your guys' as teachers are going to make you actually calculate. Like calculating this standard deviation by hand is something you would never really want to do. Uh, you can calculate by hand, and the way you're going to do that is by first calculating the variance. So if we're, again, if we're thinking of these as height in centimeters, the reason we calculate the standard deviation is because the variance has kind of the wrong units. Right, so if I was talking about the variance, here's how we would calculate it. It would be the sum of all of the squares of the differences of these pieces of data and the mean. Meaning it would look like this. Sometimes people will use mu, sometimes people will use x bar. They kind of stand for the same thing. Although usually mu is used for the mean of the entire population and x bar is used for the mean of your sample. So really, I should probably actually call this x bar because I'm thinking of this as certainly a sample size or sample people's heights, not actual the entire population. So it probably makes more sense to say x bar was 158. I have I going from 1 to 21, right? There's 21 pieces of data. And then if we're thinking of this as a sample, we should be dividing by 21 minus 1. And that's really, I wouldn't sweat understanding so much why this is true. It's just that when you have a sample, this gives you a better, a better representation of what the variance is. So if it's a sample size, you divide by your sample size minus 1. If it's the actual entire population of information, you divide by just that number n and not n minus 1. So we could calculate this. It's a giant pain, right? It's going to be 1 over 20 times. I'm not going to write it all out. It's going to be 121 minus 158 squared plus 173 minus 158 squared plus that all the way to the very last one. We get some number. I'm going to look at the calculator here, and it shows me that my variance is 734.8. So that's equal to 734.8. But it's not in the right units. Right? The units there aren't centimeters. They're centimeters squared, which isn't particularly helpful. So then instead of talking about the variance, even though it is a measure of variability or variation, I would rather talk about, so the variance is this. I'd rather talk about the standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance, which I can either look at my table here. And so I will say this calculator does calculate the standard deviation by dividing by n minus 1, like we've done here, not by dividing by n. So this is the calculation we're actually getting. We're just taking this number here and taking the square root of it. We're getting approximately, sorry, I lost it, 27.1. Um, which, let me just check on my calculator. Second so square root of 734.8. Yeah, it's exactly right. Sometimes it's good to check though. So what does that mean? Well, I'm sorry, I should say, there's a lot of terrible puns with the word mean. I'm sorry, it's just gonna happen. I'm gonna say all the puns. Um, there's your standard deviation. It's about 27.1 centimeters. And that actually is a useful piece of information because it tells us about the variation of this data set still using the same unit of measurement. But again, I don't think there's a lot of, I don't think there's a lot to gotten from actually calculating this by hand, right? Writing this all out would be done. So 
I think you definitely should understand how you're supposed to calculate the standard deviation and maybe for a couple real small data sets actually do it. But for the most part, I would use a calculator. I would use an online calculator. Now, it's important that you know the difference between dividing by n and dividing by n minus one. So you might want to make sure that you know what's happening there, but I would use an online calculator if I was going to calculate this. Let's see. Um, what time is it already? So before, so I guess I should say, are there questions about that before we maybe talk about something else? Everybody have a chance to enter their shoe size. Let me go look. Mm, looks like it's eight of you, but there's a 10 of you here. Two of you didn't do it yet. 10 would be so much nicer. Here, in case you can't see it, the last two of you go enter your shoe size. So, if we look at this data for a second, I'm gonna share my screen here. Get the chat back. So, I mean, I guess you guys can probably all see this as well, but whatever, I'm gonna show it on the screen. So here's our data and I'm going to, so I don't know, this, I assume this works like Excel. So I can find the sum of that by doing everything from A2 to what do I got there, A10. So there's the sum of everyone's shoe sizes. It doesn't make a lot of sense really, right? It doesn't make sense to add everyone's shoe sizes. But then we can also divide that by the number of data points nine, or we could actually just say, right, we could, we could even just use the average function. So this is equal to, right, they're even suggesting what we want, the average A2 to A10. So there's lots of ways to calculate things, um, which makes sense, right? 72 divided by nine would definitely be eight. Wow. My capitalization skills are excellent here. Um, we can even, let's see, I don't know, is there a standard deviation? Let's find out. Yeah, it looks like it's right there, standard deviation. Uh, we want everything from, again, A2 to A10. So you use a colon between those. So the standard deviation is a 1.22. Now, here's my question. Did the standard deviation get calculated by dividing by n or dividing by n minus one? Because it's important to know that for kind of future work. So let's go actually do this calculation by hand. Even though I, again, I would generally say calculations by hand are kind of, they're not gonna be your best friend in this class. Occasionally, sure, but not really. So here's our data and I'm gonna write it in order. In fact, ooh, I'm smart, I can just, yeah, I don't need to be that smart. So I got a six, two sevens, two eights, three eights, six, two sevens, three eights, two nines and a 10. Wow, um, you guys have excellent shoe size data. It is, at least in my opinion, the reason I say it's excellent is because it's perfectly symmetric. All right, we've got one of these, two of these, and three of these. That's kind of really nice. Thank you for having good shoe sizes. It worked out perfectly. Um, so again, the mean, and so here's what I will say. I'm not gonna throw my shoe size in there because we'll mess it up. Right? Um, the mean, and I will use mu for the mean here because I would say this is the population, right? This is the population of our class. So the mean of our class is just nine, sorry, eight. Right, it's the sum of all of the data, x sub i, divided by n. 
where, right, this is x sub 1, this is x sub 2, this is x sub 3, all the way to this is x sub 9. The very different pieces of data. And if that's x sub n, the last one, the subscript, is the value of n. So n, the number of data points, is 9, or the size of our class. Currently, it's really 10, but someone didn't put the data in there. But don't put it in now because the data is too perfect. I don't want to mess with it. Um, right, so this is just 6 plus 7 plus 7 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 9 plus 9 plus 10 divided by 9. We can calculate the variance. So again, I'm going to use the population variance, which is where we're dividing by n instead of n minus 1. Because again, this is the data for our entire class population. So it makes sense to divide by 9, because I actually want to know the variance for our class. I'm not thinking of this grouping as a sample of some larger group. It is just the entire group. So the variance is going to be 1 over n minus 1. Sorry, not n minus 1. In this case, it's 1 over n times the sum of xi minus mu squared from i equals 1 to 9. And notice I didn't put the subscript and the superscript here, the index i equals 1 to 9. A lot of times people leave that off if they kind of know what all the things are. You could also write it i equals 1 to 9, there, but it's kind of unnecessary. So here's what I've got. I've got 1 over n is 1 over 9 times the sum of all of my values minus the mean squared. So 6 minus 9 squared. Instead of writing 7 minus 9 squared twice, I'm going to write 2 times 7 minus 9 squared. Right? The frequency of any piece of data you can account for just by multiplying by how many times it occurs. And then I have a 3 times 8 minus 9. Sorry, oops, oh, I'm making a dumb mistake. My mean isn't 9. My mean is 8, right? The mean was 8. So these should actually be 8 here. Sorry about that. And then I've got two 9s. So I'm going to have 2 times 9 minus 8 squared. And then 1 times 10 minus 8 squared. So calculating this, I've got 1 9th times 6 minus 8 is negative 2 squared is 4, plus 2 times negative 1 squared is 1, plus 3 times 0, plus 2 times 1, plus 1 times 4. So looking at this, I've got 1 9th of 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4, that's 6 plus 6, that's 12. So I've got 12 ninths, which reduces to 4 thirds, which is 1.33 continuous if you like. So that's our variance. And then the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance, which is the square root of 4 thirds, which is calculator time. Let's see, what's the square root of 4 thirds? 1.15. So, so here's an important thing to notice here. Point, sorry, 1.5 about. The Google spreadsheet, the Google sheet, um, gave us not the, they gave us the um, sample size standard deviation, right? Their calculation on the spreadsheet that I that you can look at online is actually doing all this dividing by 8 instead of dividing by 9. So here's what they're actually doing. Their population data would be like, okay, the variance, instead of being 1 over 9 times 12, it would be 1 over 8 times 12, which is 12 over 8, which reduces to 3 over 2, which is 1.5. And then their sample standard deviation would be the square root of 1.5, which, unless I'm making some terrible mistake, should be what we've got right there. Yeah, 1.22. Wait, James, I have a question. 
Totally. Um, you use one over n when it's talking about population, and then you use n minus one when you're talking about a sample. Exactly. And so here's the thing. Most of the time when you use some sort of spreadsheet or online calculator, they're going to make the kind of implicit assumption usually that you mean it's a sample. So they're usually going to be calculating it for you using an n minus one instead of an n, which is not what I really wanted here, right? I, I was making the kind of broad statement that this was our entire population's worth of data. So this, this standard deviation that was calculated here wouldn't actually be the one that I wanted, which is okay. You just have to be aware of that. Most of the time it will be what you want. It makes me wonder if there's a way to get it from this. I don't actually know. Excuse me. So let's see here real quick. Mm, yeah, so I'm going to share my screen again real quickly here. Or oh, you guys, I mean, uh, if you're all, you probably could all just look at it, but I don't know if everyone's looking at it, so I'm going to share it anyway. So check it out. So if you look back at this, so I entered equal to STD, oops, equal, sorry, come on, equal sign. And if you look, you're actually given standard deviation A of a sample, standard deviation P of an entire population. So you actually have options here. I'm not sure what these other ones are. I don't know why there's like four different things. Anyway, so if we do it as a population instead, we should end up getting this 1.15 value. Let's check it out. So then we're going from A2 to A10. And yeah, totally. There we go. So this is the standard deviation as a sample. And this one is the standard deviation as a population. So it looks like if you're careful, you can kind of get things to give you exactly the thing you want. You just have to make sure that you are being kind of vigilant. Um, on the other hand, if you look back at this um, meta calculator that we use for that other data set, they only give the standard deviation one way. And it is given as the n minus one sample size way. So just be aware that the calculator you might be using might be making a choice for you. And usually that choice that it's probably going to make is the choice of n minus one. But I'll just say, just be careful. If you're not sure, you can always ask me. I'm happy to kind of help interpret things. Um, sorry, back to the stop share. All right, cool. So. There was also a question of Z scores, which might be, so I don't think, I don't think, um, oh my gosh, Whitener has talked about Z scores yet. Unless she did, I didn't finish listening to her last lecture, so she might've talked about it at the very end of class, but we can definitely say some things about Z scores. So what is a z-score? I think this pen is dying. Is this pen dying too? Uh, we'll see. Sorry, I just write a word. So a z-score is essentially how many standard deviations away from the mean you are. So for example, so actually just back up. So the z-score is typically used for a population or sample that is normally distributed. Meaning, yeah, these blue pens are done, I think. Throw them out. Meaning we, if we're talking about z-scores, we're making kind of the blanket assumption that our population has this nice 
normal distribution, or sometimes people say a Gaussian distribution or a bell curve, where the mean is right in the middle. And then we have the same thing we said before, where one standard deviation to either side is 68% of the data. So, right. So, I'm going to try and draw a nice picture here. So, this is one standard deviation to either side. I'm using the simple sigma. That's going to have 68% of the data. Two standard deviations to either side. You're going to have 95% of the data and three standard deviations to the other side. So here's one more standard deviation. You have 99.7% of the data. So what a z-score is, is a way of saying how many standard deviations you are aware. Back to the previous data for just a, uh, no, let's, so I'm gonna use a pretty standard example here, um, which is fairly accurate information. So, and I think Whitener used the same example, it's fine. So IQ scores, which will set aside the fact that there's some bias about IQ scores and all kinds of stuff. There, there, there's a lot of problems with IQ scores, we don't care. We're just looking at it from a data perspective. Um, when we talk about IQ scores, it's typically found that the population has an average IQ of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. And so, I'm actually, let's go, to the, let's go to the other side of the board here. So what if we were measuring various individuals and we said that person one has an IQ of, I don't know, let's say, let's make the numbers easy for a second. Let's say 130. Well, what's their Z-score? Well, when we calculate their Z-score, my Z is usually a little line in the middle. The Z-score is the actual observation, so the actual score minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And again, for our data, where the mean is 100 and the standard deviation is 15, we can see, well, in fact, before I even say it, how many standard deviations is 130 above the mean? It's a real easy answer. You can either Type it in the chat, or show me on your fingers if you're on video, or use words, you can use words. You guys like this guy. All right, anybody, anybody, anybody? How many 15s is this above 100? Two. And that is the z-score. So if I calculate the z-score here, it's 130 minus 100, divided by 15, which is 30 divided by 15, which is two. So the z-score literally tells us the amount of, or the number of standard deviations above or below the mean that our value is. Another example, if someone's IQ was, let's say, and let's make the numbers nice-ish here. Sure, let's say their IQ was 95. Well, what's their z-score? Well, first of all, since their score is below the mean, that always means you're going to get a negative z-score. So z-score is the or sorry, so, so measurements that are above the mean end up with a positive z-score. Measurements that are below the mean end up with a negative z-score. So here, the z-score would be 95 minus 100 divided by 15, which is let's see, 95 minus 100 is negative 5 over 15 which is negative one third. And as much as I like fractions, usually z-scores you want to met, use decimals for. So I would say this is negative 0.33, however many three, two, one. 
So the z-score here means we are one third of a standard deviation below the mean. And that's what a z-score is really measuring. It's how much above or how much below the mean you are. Now, what you can do with this is then you can start using what's called a z-table to talk about kind of what percentile you are. So for this IQ score of 130, if we look back here at this and say, okay, well, 130 would actually put us exactly right there, right? It's exactly one, two standard deviations above the mean. And then you can use that. Now, this is kind of a, a very nice example. Usually the z-scores are a little bit more less nice, right? Usually it's like 1.85 or you know, something that is a little bit less easy to find. But if you've got, for any z-value, you can then say, what percentage of the population do I have an IQ higher than or less than? And so what we can say is, well, you can either look at the Z table and for the Z score of two, again, that's two standard deviations above the mean. For a Z score of two, you can look at the Z table, which I don't have on me right, well, I can probably in this book. You can look at the Z table. I'll find one online for next class that we can kind of refer to. But for this specific example, you can actually just look at this chart or this picture we've drawn and say, okay, well, I know that within two standard deviations, 95% of the data is there. So here's what I've got. Right here in my z-score, I know that 95% of the data is here, meaning for these little end parts, there's 5% of the data split up evenly. So there's 2.5% of the data here, two and a half percent of the data here, meaning a IQ score of 130 being exactly two standard deviations above the mean means that it's an IQ score greater than the IQ score of 95 plus two and a half is 97 and a half percent of the population. So that's what we can do with a z-score. We can see what percent of the population our score is above and our score is below. We're above 97 and a half percent or below two and a half percent of the population. So that's kind of the meaning there. Um, so we're pretty much out of time because we ended at 1150, not at 12 like I was, I was gonna do. Let me do one last thing here. So again, here is the link to the Google form. If you didn't already um, record your attendance, please go there and fill out the class and the and your student ID number. And if you have questions, so I'll say for class on Thursday, definitely come with questions. Um, and if you have things you want me to address, if you think of before that, feel free to start a discussion thread in Canvas because then other students can respond to it. But if you want to send me a private email, you're also welcome to do that. But um, I will say more than my other classes, this class definitely is going to depend more on you as the students kind of giving me questions to feed off of because I am less well versed with this material than I am with like the calculus stuff. Um, also, for those of you that have taken some calculus, you've probably seen some of this if you took the 16 series, it's definitely related to what you did. And, like finding area under the curve. If you haven't taken calculus, don't worry about it. We're not going to get all calculus -y, but it could be, you know, you could make connections there if you want to make them. All right, I'm going to end class. Send me questions if you have them, and I'll see you on Thursday. Take care.